Welcome back everyone for lesson five. And in this section, we're going to talk about how important hydrating the brain is. Now, as we've talked about earlier in our lessons, 80 to 85% of the brain's mass is composed of water and its proper function relies on abundant access to water. It is interesting to note that the body only has to lose one to 2% of its water content to generate a signal of thirst. But in the brain, dehydration at this level is the equivalent of a 5% decrease in cognition, which is why we link dehydration to symptoms that are associated with brain fog. Furthermore, two-thirds of people are chronically dehydrated, and most people will drink less than 32 ounces per day. Yet we lose more than that per day, which puts us in a chronic state of dehydration. This is why using a formula of drinking half of your body weight in ounces and water per day is so important because this is truly the equation to ensure optimal hydration. So what makes us dehydrated? Stress is one example, but we'll talk about that more in a lesson that comes up later. In order to be inspired to consume water, and we do need to sometimes inspire people to do this, it always helps to understand why it's so important in the brain and the body. Water is essential in supporting the electrical activity of the brain, which is directly correlated to thought and memory. Brain cells need twice as much energy as other cells in the body, and water is the most efficient way to get this energy in. Water is essential for hormone and neurotransmitter production. The brain cannot store water, so we have to consume water continually throughout the day to be optimally hydrated. Chronic dehydration can shrink the brain, and this has been shown in brain scans. For example, competitive bodybuilders will go to extreme measures to dehydrate their body and therefore their brain prior to event times. They therefore experience dry mouth, lightheadedness, irritability and restlessness, rapid heart rate, rapid breathing, and altered behavior such as anxiety and confusion. To be able to see a brain scan from a competitive bodybuilder in this mode would show severe global hypoperfusion or low blood flow in the brain. And anyone who could see this evidence would most likely resolve to become more mindful of their own daily water consumption. And this can be the inspiration I was mentioning earlier. And of course, we also know that water helps to remove toxins from our blood, including pollution, radiation, heavy metals, and pesticides. These are all really important reasons to remember to continually drink water throughout the day. And we have to have our client doing this as well. So there are a lot of brain functions that are affected by dehydration and can even include short-term memory and attention. Now, it's not uncommon to see a long-distance runner complete a race only to need medical treatment after becoming confused and disoriented. This is most likely caused by a loss of sodium and electrolytes due to dehydration from strenuous exercise and heavy sweating. Now, while there's a lot of conflicting information, it's pretty clear that hydration affects the brain, particularly in elderly clients and in children. Elderly clients might tend to have more diseases and confounding factors, such as medications being taken, that will affect hydration. Considering those who might already have cognitive difficulties, when an older adult becomes dehydrated, his or her cognitive function becomes even more inhibited. Disabled adults and young children rely on others to provide them water. Thus, their thirst and need for hydration may not be addressed as quickly as it would be for an older child or an adult who's able to get a drink on their own when they feel thirsty, leading to dehydration. These brain-related effects of dehydration reinforce the fact that hydration is essential not just for physical function, but for intellectual and mental function, too. Why do we feel thirsty? Early theories suggested that thirst is a local sensation of dryness in the mouth and throat, but now we know that thirst is actually a homeostatic response to changes in the blood. Increases in plasma osmolality or decreases in plasma volume or pressure will trigger the sensation of thirst, which motivates us to find and consume water and thereby restore the parameters to their physiological set points. The key brain structure for the creation of thirst is believed to be the lamina terminalis, or the LT, which is a group of three deep 
four brain nuclei that coordinate the homeostatic response to fluid imbalance. While the importance of the LT for the control of drinking has been known for decades, our understanding of the underlying circuit mechanisms remains limited. For example, we still don't know the identity of most of the cell types that reside in the LT, the dynamics of those cells during behavior, or the anatomical pathways by which they transmit information to other regions of the brain. This knowledge gap reflects, in part, the complexity of the LT, which contains a diversity of intermingled neural cell types distributed across three small nuclei. Even mild dehydration can alter our mood, energy level, and our ability to think clearly, according to two recent studies conducted at the University of Connecticut. The test showed that it didn't matter if a person had just walked for 40 minutes on a treadmill or was sitting at rest in front of a computer. The adverse effects from mild dehydration were the same. Mild dehydration is defined as an approximately 1.5% loss in normal water volume in the body. These test results affirm the importance of staying properly hydrated at all times and not just during exercise. This also includes the awareness for how important it is to be hydrated in extreme heat or during physical exertion. Now, our thirst sensation doesn't really appear until we are 1% or maybe 2% dehydrated, but by then dehydration is already setting in and starting to impact how our mind and body perform. Dehydration affects all people, and staying properly hydrated is just as important for those who work all day at a computer as it is for a long-distance runner who can lose up to 8% of their body weight as water when they are competing. Even mild dehydration that can occur during the course of our ordinary daily activities can degrade how we are feeling, especially true for women who appear to be more susceptible to the adverse effects of low levels of dehydration than men. In both genders, these adverse mood changes might limit the motivation required to engage in even moderate aerobic exercise. Mild dehydration might also interfere with other daily activities even when there is no physical demand component present. If water levels go too low, our brain cells cannot function properly, leading to cognitive problems. The brains of dehydrated adults show signs of increased neuron activity when performing tasks that are considered cognitively engaging, indicating that their brains are working harder than normal to complete the task. In healthy, young adults, this additional effort typically manifests itself as fatigue and changes in mood, but in populations with less cognitive reserve, such as the elderly, this can lead to a decline in cognitive performance. Performance on complex cognitive tasks that require high levels of brain power is most likely to decline due to the strain of dehydration. A meta-analysis of 33 studies done found that dehydration corresponding to more than a 2% reduction in body mass, for example, 3 pounds of fluid loss in a 150-pound person, was associated with significant impairments on attention, executive function, and motor coordination. As mentioned before, women of all ages seem to be more sensitive to the effects of dehydration, but elderly women are especially vulnerable. A study examining the hydration status of over 2,500 adults over the age of 60 found that women with inadequate levels of hydration showed worse performance on cognitive tasks related to attention and processing speed. The performance of dehydrated men also declined, but to a lesser degree. Fatigue toward the end of a prolonged sporting event might result as much from dehydration as from fuel substrate depletion. Again, exercise performance can be impaired when an individual is dehydrated by as little as 2% of their total body weight. Losses in excess of 5% of body weight can decrease the performance capacity for the athlete or their work by about 30%. It also seems evident that the type of event, competition, or activity matters as well. For example, sprint athletes are generally less concerned about the effects of dehydration than are endurance athletes. However, the capacity to perform high-intensity exercise, which results in exhaustion within a few minutes, is reduced by as much as 45% by prior dehydration states corresponding to a loss of only 2.5% of total body weight. 
Although sprint events offer little opportunity for sweat loss, athletes who travel to compete in hot climates are likely to experience acute dehydration, which persists for several days and can become serious enough to have a detrimental effect on their performance in competition. But even in cool laboratory conditions that are controlled, maximal aerobic power, or VO2 max, decreases by about 5% when an athlete experiences fluid loss equivalent to 3% of body mass or more. In hot conditions, similar water deficits can cause a larger decrease in VO2 max. To summarize, we could say that over the course of a typical 24-hour period, the longest spell that most of us go without fluid intake is that 6 to 8 hours that we spend sleeping. Sleeping is hardly the type of activity that we would normally think we'd lose sweat over, but that doesn't mean that we're not losing water during the night. With every breath while sleeping, we expel moisture, and the cumulative effect of a night's sleep is really being dried out, literally. So whether you are running, playing tennis, baseball, basketball, or weightlifting, or even whether you are participating in team or individual activities, hydration levels impact performance. This is regulated by the brain and also impacts the brain. Having sufficient water in the body and brain improves reaction times, performance, and even things like equilibrium or balance. To summarize the need for hydration, a 2% level of dehydration leads to a 10% drop in athletic performance. And as brain fitness coaches, we might be working with a client with exercise. So therefore, hydration is important, especially if it's compromised. It's really important for clients to stay hydrated as they exercise. In addition to the performance decrements and the effects on the brain, dehydration will also slow metabolism. So for all of these reasons, hydration deserves its own chapter or section in this training. The brain fitness coach has to encourage hydration for their client so that the brain and body perform optimally.